ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening. Welcome to the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board meeting on April 8th, 2024. I'd like to call this meeting to order. My name is Rachel Zemberry. I'm the chair of the board, um, and I'd like if the other members of the board could please introduce themselves. Steve Rebelak, good evening. Eugene Benson. Shayna Corman Houston. Ken Allow. Thank you very much. And we have the director of the Department of Planning and Community Development, Claire Ricker, joining us this evening as well. Thank you. Uh, so let's go ahead and move to our first item of business tonight, which is a public hearing for docket number 3789-62-64 Brooks Avenue. Um, and I will turn it over first to uh, Claire for any uh, background on this, uh, on this hearing. Sure. So this is an application to install a uh, dormer um, on a, uh, a property that is adjacent to the Minuteman bikeway. This will be visible. <coughs> Um, from the Minuteman bikeway, and so uh, therefore it was decided that the board should probably hear this um, application. Um, the current use is uh, for a two-family, is an existing uh, non-conforming um, uh, two-family home, um, and the applicant uh, seeks a special permit and hearing um, from the board uh, to determine the appropriateness of the uh, dormer, the addition of the dormer, as well as an exit gate onto the minimum bikeway um, in the site plan. Great, thank you very much. Um, and before we actually get to the hearing, I wanted to turn this over to Jean because I understand you had a question for the for the board, um, um, really about the uh, <laughs> if this falls under EDR criteria and whether or not. Um, this is something that needs to come in front of the board or can be reviewed uh, by the um, uh, Department of Planning and the Building Department. So if I can turn it over to you first. Sure, so in, in thinking about whether this is subject to environmental design review, um, I took a look at section 3.4.2 of the zoning bylaw. I also spoke with Steve because he had been on the Zoning Board of Appeals and also had some experience with this. And it seems like this um, project does not require a special permit. So the only reason why it would require environmental design review under the criteria is if it alters the facade in a manner that affects the ar architectural integrity of the structure. So I, I talk, spoke this morning with um, Mr. Champa, the head of inspectional services, to get an understanding about this. And I asked him, is this an unusual dormer in any way? Does it raise any issues in any way? Or is this sort of the standard run-of-the-mill dormers we tend to see added to two-family homes? <clears throat> and he just said it's pretty much a standard shed dormer, nothing particularly special or unusual about it. So I said, then what's the reason why it needs environmental design review? And his response was, well, we weren't sure since it was on the bikeway whether, or whether it butts the bikeway, whether um, the redevelopment board should look at it or not. And um, I said, huh. He said, what do you think about that? <laughs> I said, well, I think we should have a discussion at the redevelopment board um, about that tonight. I also then spoke to Claire about it a little bit. And it seems that the question is, who gets to make the decision whether it alters the facade in a manner that affects the architectural integrity of the structure? Because the way the bylaw is written, it does, it sort of says we only get to do an EDR review if it alters the, you know, facade and affects the architectural integrity. So one way to think about this is we need to make a decision on each one of these that come before us and if we decide that it doesn't affect the architectural integrity, then there's no EDR review, then we just say it doesn't meet the criteria for EDR review. The alternative is to ask um, the planning director and the director of inspectional services to have a discussion about each one of these 
when they come and to if they can agree that it doesn't, <coughs> then no need to come to us. But if they think that it does or it might affect it, then it would come to us. So I think maybe our initial conversation is um, if this doesn't affect the architectural integrity or does it, and if it doesn't, what do we do with this? Do we just say it doesn't require EDR review and therefore, you know, the um, uh, the applicant can go ahead without. So the finding would be, for example, that it does not meet the criteria of EDR. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. So that's that's where we are on that. Um, any thoughts on um, on what Jean has just shared before before we turn it over to the the applicant? And I appreciate you bearing with us while we have this discussion. Thank you. There's. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with the thought the reasoning, but for tonight's particular case, um, I don't think we've received any information about what the about the finish, color, kind of we we have a we have a we have a we have plan we have construction drawings or design drawings, but not any sort of a rendering that would let us see what the facade will actually look like. So I think I think for tonight, I would at least like to ask that have the opportunity to ask that question. Great, thank you. Shana? Um, I feel like if you walk up and down the street in this, in this neighborhood, um, more houses than not have this sort of dormer um, and, and that it would not likely um, impact the architectural integrity um, and so I would um, I would lean in the direction of at least in this particular case uh, not needing EDR review and um, the question of the question that Jean raised about process. Um, of process I think is a separate question great thank you um, can any thoughts but my, my feeling is you know we should should invite our applicant to speak and then I think have a discussion around whether or not we feel it meets the criteria of EDR unless you have any other no I, I wholeheartedly agree with uh, Jean yeah um, that I don't think this looking at this and reading this I don't think uh, it justifies uh, it falls in our uh, preview purview purview right yes okay and um, yeah, this is a typical dormer that's added. I also agree with Gene about uh, deciding uh, does it go in front of us or not. I think if uh, the building commissioner and planning, uh, planning director says it doesn't, it then it doesn't. I think uh, they, they're the first line that can, can look at this and say, yeah, this is pretty no typical, pretty normal. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't, and if they feel like it's something's out there that they want to, they can bring it to us, but not every single thing is brought to us like this. Um, so as far as today's review, um, he's here. I, I just wanna, you know, I don't think we need to have, have him say anything. If we have questions for him, we can, but I think um, he's all set as far as I'm concerned. Can I, can I just- Gene, please go ahead. A couple things. So I walk the block today and there are a number of houses that are very similar um, if you think about this if the houses were on the other side of Brooks Avenue it wouldn't be an issue at all it just happens to be because it's on the Minuteman bikeway side that it becomes an issue and I, I just I didn't walk and look at every house but I walked and looked at a few houses there actually were no dormers on the houses on the next sides but if you walk on the Minuteman bikeway any length, you're going to see these shed dormers up and down the bikeway um, on the top of two family houses. So, you know, they're not something new. They're not something significantly different in any way. Yep. So um, if I could su suggest in terms of where um, at least the majority of the discussion seems to be moving, um, is whether or not at this time we feel like uh, it would be appropriate for someone to make a motion um, 
of a uh, finding that this um, docket uh, 32 to 64 Brooks Ave does not meet the criteria of EDR and does not require a special permit. I, I'll so move. I'll second that. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I am a yes as well. So um, that would mean <laughs> that you actually do not need a special permit no, okay. or um, uh, um, environmental design because the design review criteria do not um, apply yeah. um, in this particular case because the um, proposal does not alter the architectural integrity of the of the building. Right. So I appreciate you coming in the, this evening, Thank and you. we will certainly, um, I think, as a next step before we. Um, before we fully close the, the, the public hearing and the, and the docking, the docket, um, what I would like to do is have a discussion among the board about procedure um, yeah. going forward and, yeah. and, and also see if you have any questions. No, only the question was because we have done many of these two families in yes. Arlington. And so this was very unique, we, uh, kind of, because, um, because of the management back, uh, when we were trying to do dormant, we were trying to do like the permitting process a little, mm -hmm. little time, and then we were trying to blow the whole roof to raise the height. Then um, Mike Champa told me, oh no, if you do the whole roof, then there's a bylaw which triggers the tree ordinance, and I have to get the whole thing, and I'm like, oh really? What mm -hmm. if I just do simple one side dormant? He said, well, if you don't touch the roof and just do one second, then you're good. You know? right. I'll, I'll approve your permit. So I said, okay, let's just do it. And I tell my um, architect to do that. And then I went back again. He's like, oh, sorry. Now you got to go in front. I'm like, what? What right. happened just now? Right. Yeah. So then he said, oh, because of the minute man here. And so it was, it was a process for us I, over here. Yeah. I understand that. And I think that's what we, yeah. our next step to do yeah, is yeah. to, um, there, uh, you, you are correct in that the um, the Minuteman Bikeway um, yeah. location Trigger. throws yeah, things into a, a, a space sometimes of um, needing to really understand sure. whether whether a special permit um, is required to review the project under yeah. environmental design right, right. Um, criteria. So I think that. Again, that's what we'll talk about is a yeah. more streamlined process to make sure that it's it's right. uh, so easy he going was, forward. He was about to issue us permit yes. and then he called back. So yes. now, so like what, what is uh, how, how this is going to take time? So what we would do, and Claire, please feel free to, to jump in. Um, you, you you would work with Mike to let him know that the finding was that this review is not required, and I'll, you should be able to. I'll send an email to Mike first thing in the morning to let him know yeah. what the findings were, and you should be able to issue your building permit from there. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much for Thank your you understanding. Yeah, no problem. You. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Yep. So before we close um, the public hearing in the um, this docket, um, uh, to Jean's point, I think we sh we should um, talk Claire with with you as well about a um, a process so that we can be more streamlined going forward. And I think, Jean, you, uh, maybe perhaps if you could reiterate what your initial suggestion was, and then Claire, I'd love to see if you have any thoughts um, on on how you think we could sure. best work together with you and Inspector Champa and the and the board. Yeah, I, I guess I should say, and, and the applicant pointed this out, the, the um, head of inspectional services makes a lot of decisions already about, you know, what fits within the zoning code, what doesn't, what needs a special permit, what may need a variance, et cetera. So I don't think it's a lot to add to his plate to say he and Claire, if Claire would want to be in this, interested in hearing from you on it, would make a decision about whether it met this criteria B for applicability or not. And then if it doesn't meet the criteria, Mike can do whatever he needs to do, but if it does meet the criteria, then the applicant has to come here. So I don't know what you think about that. I think that's fine. I think Mike generally has, um, because he sees every project that comes in even more than I do, um, he has a, a good idea of you know what's a regular shed, shed dormer, what's a you know what's appropriate for the neighborhood. Not that you know uh, my office or my, you know, my me myself couldn't go out there and take a look 
at you know vernacular and what what the situation is. Um, I think where I was a little concerned is that that would ultimately turn into an administrative approval on on my department's you know behalf, um, which I'm happy to issue. I think I've I have been a little hesitant to issue administrative approval uh, in my ten years so far. But if that is you know what the board is looking at, so long as it's something very typical, something very typical in the neighborhood, I'm you know happy to work with um, Inspector Champa and um, and, and um, issue that sort of approval. Kim. Yes, I think uh, that would work out well. Okay, great. Thank you. Shana, any Agreed. discussion? Jean? I said what I had to say. Great. Uh, Steve? So one, uh, one thing I, I like to throw into the mix is our residential design guidelines for mm -hmm. single and two-family homes. And I think proposed alterations that, you know, that are consistent with those guidelines do not need to come before us. Great. That is a wonderful that suggestion. A good, yes, I appreciate that. Thank you, Steve. Great. Uh, anything else? I will open it up to public comment, but seeing that nobody is here for that, <laughs> I will close public comment and uh, see if there is a motion to close this public hearing. Should we should we vote on what we just? Uh, we voted on the finding. Right. Should we um, vote on what we'd like the process to be? Uh, sure. So, uh, Jean, would you like to craft a motion? Um, I think to that, that end. The motion should be when, when there's a uh, project that um, raises the issue in 3.4.2b as to whether it alters the facade in a manner that affects the architectural integrity of the structure. Um, the um, director of inspectional services with the planning director will make an administrative decision as to whether it needs to come to the board taking into consideration the residential design guidelines. Is there a second to that motion? Can I ask one question? Please. Uh, the, the ordinance you specified, Gene, is solely for R1 and R2. No. It's for any, it could be in any of the um, districts. But you know what, Ken? For most of the other districts, they'll require a special permit, which will trigger another thing that requires EDR review. So it's EDR review if it either requires a building permit and a special permit, or it alters the facade of a building. So when you get to things on Mass Ave or Broadway or you know mixed use, we get EDR review under the other part of the regulation of the bylaw. Okay, that's fine. It sounds that I'm okay with that. Then I just don't want to. We're not cutting ourselves out completely. Thank you. Do we could add just in um, um, for um, one and two family dwellings, or we could say in the R0, R1, and R2 zones, if you want to add that. Would you feel more comfortable? Yeah, but also, could we add our um, three families too? Yeah. Yes, I would feel more comfortable with that. In R0, R1, R2, and R3 only. So do we want do we want to focus on districts or uses? It's another great question. Because you can say single, two, and three family home dwellings, um, which would apply regardless of district. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yes, I think. Th that's a not very good suggestion, uh, Steve. Okay, so you're in agreement to amend your motion to include single, two, and three family dwellings. Single, two, duplex, and three family and two places. I'll second that. All right. Uh, is there a vote? Starting with Steve. Uh, so where did we work? There was mention of the residential design guidelines in there. Yes. Um, can I suggest an amendment to Please. that? Please. Uh, things that, what, what's, what's the language that we have now? Gene, could you restate? Um, <laughs> it was um, subject to review with the residential design guidelines. So, can we say subject to review 
subject to um, conformance with the residential design guidelines for single or two family dwellings or other design guidelines that the town may adopt. Okay, I would accept that amendment. Could you, let's go ahead and restate <laughs> <laughs> the motion please, Jean. You don't really think I can restate it without this case, do you? I'll try. Um, in instances where there's a question about whether um, something alters the facade in a manner that affects the architectural integrity of the structure to require EDR review under section 3.4.2, the decision will be made jointly by the um, head of inspectional services and the planning director and um, will not come to the board if they believe it does not for single two family duplex and three family dwellings that are in conformance with the residential design guidelines and other guidelines that may be adopted. Thank you. I'll second that. I will not make Jean restate that again. Because uh, it won't be the same. Then. I know, I know. <laughs> um, Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Thank you all. I think we will move there forward there. with that new process. And that will conclude our public hearing for docket number 3789. Let's move to agenda item number two, which is the uh, master planning process update. And I will turn it over to Claire. Great, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so on February 29th, uh, Sarah and I held a webinar um, for interested parties in um, uh, an Arlington uh, master plan update, um, which would be an update to the master plan of 2015. Um, we're calling the, the process AMP up. Um, the master plan update. Um, so as part of that, I gave a presentation, which I won't go through um, in total tonight, um, that basically went over what is master planning, kind of recapped um, some of the work that's done and some of the achievements um, that have been met um, in the, from the master plan of 2015, um, and then went through the update process, the planning uh, process, uh, including roles and responsibilities, um, you know, with the status of where we are right now, timeline um, for this project and then next steps. And so because this is, um, you know, this is a group that you know, already sort of understands and, and um, is familiar with the master planning process, I won't go through um, some of these background slides, um, you know, only to say um, characteristics of the master plan are that it's comprehensive, long term, it encompasses the entire community, focused primarily on physical um, development and assets, and then of course, um, the process, uh, the, the first step is oversight, which is establishing a committee, um, an advisory committee that can um, oversee the process and um, you know, offer insight and advice on um, where we are and help direct um, any working groups um, or other um, you know, bodies that, that the group, uh, that the advisory committee um, thinks are appropriate and important. Um, so I think we can also review what is a master plan in Massachusetts. Um, it is governed by the planning board. It will be your role as a planning board that um, you will sort of oversee this process even from a, probably from a, uh, an even broader view than a master plan advisory committee. Um, there are seven study areas that um, I think that you are mostly familiar with, including land use and housing, which we've been working on a lot in the last year, clearly like economic development, which is something I know this board is interested in, arts and culture, open space, public services, and then uh, transportation. Um, we will also need to include a statement on goals and policies as well as an implementation plan um, for the master plan update. Um, the planning process at a glance uh, I went over, um, identification of issues, surveying, and by survey I don't just mean surveys, but um, you know, really polling and um, working with the community um, to see what it is, um, where we are and what's needed, listing of goals and objectives, preparation of the plan, consider alternatives, adopt the plan, implement the plan, and then evaluate the plan. So we will go back to the 2015 um, master plan. Um, clearly a community conversation, um, which is uh, essentially where we are right now with the update process, 
Um, this is from the 2015 uh, master plan. Um, what nice we are here right at the beginning, and at the end of 2025, we are here. Um, so we are at the place where we are, um, um, where, where we are scheduled to update the plan. Um, some of the uh, achievements uh, since 2015 is recodification of the zoning bylaw, um, adoption of residential design guidelines, um, and then the design guidelines for commercial and industrial sites, which we are kicking off um, is underway in 2024. Um, some of the transportation um, goals and policies, we adopted a complete streets policy in 2016, and then of course the Connect Arlington Sustainable Transportation Plan of 2021 um, also came out of the uh, goals uh, from the 2015 master plan. Um, some other supporting documents that have been developed as a result of the plan. We already um, talked about the residential design guidelines, Arlington Heights Neighborhood Action Plan, which we're re-engaging on, um, and then the study, the economic analysis of industrial districts, which um, was informed by the Arlington Heights Neighborhood Action Plan. So one plan leads to the next, uh, clearly since 2015. So next steps for the master plan update. Um, here is the ARB's responsibilities will be to appoint a new uh, master plan update advisory committee, which we're calling the AMP Up um, Advisory Committee. Um, this is a group that we have uh, solicited applications from, um, from uh, our, tw our uh, February 29th meeting. These applications are open through April uh, 14th. Um, for those who are interested in uh, being on this advisory committee, and we're looking to have 12 uh, community members serve on the board. Um, from there, staff will draft a request uh, uh, for proposals from planning consultants. This scope uh, will be a draft that is reviewed by the advisory committee. It will be task one um, of an advisory committee. This is a little different than how this has been done in other communities where um, the staff has worked to develop uh, an RFP and then once the consultant is selected, um, an advisory committee generally is selected once the consultant is on board. We want to get the advisory committee on board prior um, to selecting a uh, consultant so that um, we can have some community input on who that consultant may be. Um, and then once we have um, selected the planning consultant, we will kick off the project in earnest. Um, so here's the timeline I put together. Um, that kind of goes over some of this um, work that we uh, intend to do um, in the next year or so, um, and then move into um, you know the AMP Up project kickoff likely November-ish of this year um, once the consultants on board, and that's when we will start the you know update the master planning process um, uh, more intensely. Um, so the AMP Up advisory committee, we're hoping to uh, find 12 community members. Um, who wish to serve, plus representatives from the Redevelopment Board, the Select Board, and the Capital Planning Committee. This was uh, roughly the same makeup um, of the advisory committee from 2015. Um, we've pitched it as a two-year commitment um, with month monthly meetings over Zoom, um, but we may meet more frequently um, throughout 2025 as the work progresses. Um, the committee uh, should be in place by May, the first meeting scheduled for the first week in June. So that's roughly um, the presentation that was given at the end of February, uh, as well as um, you know the process that we're looking to um, you know go through to get this uh, get this project kicked off. Great, thank you so much. It's very comprehensive, Great. and I appreciate you sharing that. Sure. Um, any uh, questions or comments, starting with Shana? Uh, none. None at this time. Great, Jean. Just wondering how. Um, you think it's going and getting volunteers? Um, we have 22, 26 applications as of today. Wow. Fabulous, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very exciting. And we've, um, you know, and I said in the presentation, and we're really hoping to get some um, folks who rent um, in Arlington on the commute on the um, advisory board. That's something that's um, pretty uh, important, I think, uh, or something that I heard a lot in. The MBTA communities process is like we'd like to start we can like to hear from some renters um, and people who um, want to be in Arlington long term but perhaps you know, potentially not as property owners as well as property owners you know folks who uh, have experience in planning although that's not necessarily a prerequisite and then of course the three um, uh, representatives from this board uh, capital planning and then um, the select board also to offer their expertise and um, I, I, I um, eventually eventually 
um, with, before this committee, I think, is uh, really established, that we, we will make a recommendation to the Redevelopment Board for membership, um, and the Redevelopment Board can vote to establish um, the committee. This will likely be done at our second meeting in May, if not the first meeting in May, although that's starting to um, get a little full. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I think that's, that will, uh, that, that's basically how we're going to move through the establishment of this committee. Great. Uh, thanks. Other than, you know, the 12 people and the capital planning and select board and us and renters, are there any sort of criteria you're looking for? You know, like people with planning experience, et cetera, et cetera. I think what, what we explained at, uh, uh, during the presentation is that it's um, it would be great for folks to have planning experience, but that's not necessarily anything that would keep someone from being selected to be on the board or be on the committee. Any other questions? No, I guess the board has to decide who's going to be the who's board. Who's the representative? Yeah. Yeah, at some point. Yes. 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 That's it. Great, Steve. Uh, two questions. Yes. Did you say three members of the ARB? I said three members of, of uh, town committees and boards, one from the ARB, one from capital planning, uh, excuse me, one from FinCom, one from the select board. Okay, so we'll draw straws at some point. Uh, essentially, yes. <laughs> and um, just out of curiosity, have you received many or any applicants, or ap any application from applicants with transportation backgrounds? That's interesting. We have, yes. Couple from AVAC that have. Oh, applied. excellent. Yeah. Okay. Um, staff has uh, been promoting this with their boards and committees as well, as well as the general public in terms of you know please apply and um, offer your expertise. Thank you, Ken. Uh, I'm just one right now. Um, have we uh, got approved for any funding from the from the town yet or the consultant? Thank you. So. Um, there is a warrant article um, for a fifty thousand dollar appropriation related to master planning. Um, so that is that is a start. It's a bit of seed money. I have also had a bit of discussion with um, uh, Mr. Feeney about outstanding ARPA dollars, um, which may be applied to master planning. We we have at least done the homework on that, um, and we think that whatever uh, the fifty thousand appropriation doesn't cover, we will be able to achieve with ARPA funding. Um, I just have to get the consultant in place before the end of the year. Uh, I don't think 50,000 is enough. I agree. Um, I think we spent close to what, 200,000? The original appropriation in 2015 was for 175,000, and I think they might have gone over. I have asked for $250,000 to do this project. Um, and like I said, the appropriation of 50 is the initial funding. Um, but we would be looking to use ARPA dollars, uh, any remaining ARPA money, to um, supplement the rest. So we have about 200,000 upper, upper funding for this? We have quite a bit of ARPA, outstanding ARPA um, okay. funds to, um, that need to be committed before the end of the year. Uh, okay. Uh, that's all I have for now, I think. Okay. I think Having enough funding so we so we can get we can the get the resources to, and the studies uh, to do this. It's going to be a, a long and drawn out process that's going to involve a lot of people, and I don't want to run out of funding so we we stop doing these. Uh, so, and that's all I have for now. Great, thank you. Um, and I'll just echo I think the question that Steve had. My my question was whether or not there was anyone with any transportation experience who had um, applied so far because they think that that's something that's very important, obviously. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Great. Okay, hold on. Please, go ahead. Have there been any uh, landowners? Um, commercial landowners? Yes, commercial landowners that, uh, that have uh, said they're interested. Review them all together. Yes. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Great. Good question. Yep. 
Anything else? Yeah, I could have asked this before. What's the difference between, as you see, between updating the master plan as opposed to starting a whole new process? That's a great question. I think so. What we will do is use the 2015 master plan as a place to start. Um, we don't have to, you know, start all the way over from scratch. Um, may, what will likely result in, um, you know, um, fewer like visioning sessions and things like that, and I think more um, um, detailed and specific work in those seven subject areas. And we've talked in this, you know, this board. I know we've had discussions about needing to flesh out or wanting to do more work in the economic development um, section. I also think open space could probably use um, some more attention. Um, but basically, it's using the 2015 document as a starting place rather than just completely starting, you know, from from scratch. Um, what what consultants are you considering at this point? I think uh, you know there are several out there. Uh, RKG did, I believe, did the master plan um, in 2015. But you know there are several firms out there right now that are doing master planning work, including MAPC, um, which I don't know, you know doesn't necessarily mean you have to go with MAPC, but they are doing the work. Um, I know Util just did Lowell's master plan. Um, there are a lot of firms out there working in this uh, you know, uh, subject matter. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much for the update. Uh, let's move on to agenda item number three the update for the timeline for the um, Arlington Heights Business District. Great. Um, <clears throat> so this is something that um, has been a little bit on the back burner as we've you know, moved through uh, prepping for town meeting and um, master plan uh, work uh, kickoff. But I did um, in January make a presentation uh, to the Arlington Heights uh, Business Association group about um, the idea that we would be um, progressing um, an Arlington Heights business district, um, a comprehensive business district um, in, in Arlington. Um, uh, I, I was at their meeting on in, in January and talked about this and tried to gauge interest um, uh, from uh, those who, who were there. Um, everybody seemed pretty excited about the idea. There were a number of people who were on that Arlington Heights Neighborhood Action Plan Committee who um, did agree and uh, to participate um, in this implementation project. Um, so sort of did a, a, a soft kickoff um, in January. Um, I re-engaged with the Arlington Heights Neighborhood Plan Committee, um, reached out to them both at this business meeting and then again over email, um, including today, um, to, um, uh, to propose a meeting in May on May 9th. Um, the committee would uh, get together to the kickoff of this project, the implementation. Um, I've also secured a table at the Arlington Heights Spring Fling on the 19th of May um, to, um, you know, to start to bring this uh, proposal to the public and talk a little bit more about what a comprehensive business zone means um, and um, what it will do for the area. Um, we would move into um, another committee meeting, maybe after this initial uh, public uh, engagement, and then have a public meeting um, sometime in late June. Um, to go over the initial uh, proposal for for this comprehensive business district and bring it back to the public, um, so that you know, we can revisit um, the topic and um, you know gauge gauge interest and um, you know get honestly get some input and suggestions. The plan is five years old at this point. Um, there are opportunities for engagement over the summer. I haven't quite identified. You know, I know that for MBTA communities, we were at the farmers market quite a bit. You know, this is something we could um, do again um, over the summer a couple of times. Um, to let people know what's happening. Um, again, um, we would uh, have this committee meet to work to draft the zoning. Um, Jean, you asked for a, a time sort of certain about when this may come back to the ARB. I'm looking at your meeting on the 21st of October for that. Um, and, and then after uh, you know, getting the ARB's input, um, you know, drafting this zoning um, with the committee, have a second public meeting where we sort of go over our findings and um, <coughs> try to fine tune um, public input and um, you know, any observation uh, that, that we get at that point with the final zoning to the ARB right about when we usually start to discuss warrant articles um, in December um, and then draft the warrant article hearing and bring it to town meeting next spring. Um, so that's the timeline that um, you know, I've, I've looked at that we've established. 
Um, and uh, like I said, I reached out to the committee this afternoon to, to talk about the meeting on uh, May 9th and see if that works for folks. And um, we should be getting this underway right after town meeting. Great, thank you. Uh, Ken, any questions? Comments? Do we have a consultant on board for this or do we need a consultant for this? We don't have a consultant on board for this. Um, I'm not sure we need a consultant for this. We do have pretty um, um, prescriptive zoning written already in the neighborhood action plan. And I think what we're looking for is uh, public input and comment um, I would, I think, uh, you know, if, when, when the zoning, uh, as we're drafting the zoning, I will rely on um, the ARB, honestly, for um, input and um, also work with uh, the town council um, on drafting the zoning for this. Um, but, you know, interestingly, I think what we did at VTA Communities, we did not have um, uh, a consultant other than town council to review and um, and this board, frankly, to, re to review the zoning as it was um, drafted. Um, we used uh, mostly, you know, like I said, resources that we have in hand. Um, we don't, so no, we don't have a consultant um, for this. It's just more, um, uh, really honestly, this is about public outreach, plan being five years old, and, you know, just making sure that we have, um, that, that it's still, you know, what the community is, is uh, looking to, to, to have uh, progressed. Uh, the reason why I asked is, I think having diagrams and some s models and SketchUp stuff would help uh, portray our ideas better uh, and get comment back from the public. Uh, I think just having you know, some verbiage is not good enough. And it'd be hard to misinterpret what what is meant. So I would suggest maybe having some setting aside some sort of funding where we hire somebody to uh, uh, do some models or or some diagrams, so that uh, it'd be easily understood. Okay. Great. Thank you, Ken. <clears throat> Anything else? No, not for now. I think it's good. Good start. Great. Thank yeah. you, Shana. Um, <clears throat> Ken just touched on something I was going to ask, what, uh, which was what kind of budget do you anticipate needing for this um, uh, with mailings, with whatever else? Uh, what sort of budget do you anticipate needing? and? Where do you think that's going to be coming from? Uh, that's a great question. I think, you know, it's, I do have some department funds um, that we could put towards this, as well as um, planning dollars that, you know, I regularly receive through um, CDBG that's possible, that's applicable to this as well. Um, and certainly I could ask, um, you know, uh, uh, see what's available through the town manager's office. I don't anticipate this being a, a, a big dollar um, project or that heavy a lift. I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking maybe uh, $2,500, $5, $5,000, something like that, um, which shouldn't be too, too hard to come up with. Okay. And how are you feeling about staff time with the master plan and the Arlington Heights Business District? Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great question. I think um, I'm so working a lot of <laughs> um, cl clearly, I think you know we will need some um, we'll need staff to be engaged on this. I think Marisa Lau, who's our senior planner, um, has some capacity to help me with this project. Okay, um, that's all I have. Great, thank you, Jean. Yeah, I think this looks good and good. in lines with some of the things um, we've talked about before. Do, do we have an IRB member? On this committee, we do. Um, it's Rachel. Maybe it's me. Oh, good. It's Rachel. Okay. Just, just wondered whether we did. Um, yeah, I think the only thing, and we've talked about this in some other contexts too. If we have a ARB member on the committee, we can ask the ARB member at any point during this time to sort of do a little presentation, presentation. <laughs> or if. 
you, Rachel, since it's going to be you, feel at any point it would be helpful to have input from the board along the way. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this is good. I, I sort of, you know, agree that I don't think this is like a heavy spending plan yeah. to get done. There, there are some changes, I think, in the heights since that plan was done five years ago. And when I was reading it a couple months ago, I was like, oh, those things happened yeah. even without the plan. So I think there's a little bit of a need to think about that and, um, and sort of how to fit those pieces together in, in what will be 2025 and 2026. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Steve. Yeah, one question. Um, any word or in terms of gauging interest, um, did you get any feedback or I'm thinking about the the owners of the significant the significant industrial properties yes. in the Heights, like yes. the gym site. Yes. Um, any feedback? Or was it positive? Very positive feedback from owners of larger industrial sites um, that I have um, spoken with. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Great. Any other questions for Claire? All right, um, so let us uh, close agenda item number three and move to agenda item number four, which is the special town meeting discussion. So I will turn this one over to Claire uh, to discuss um, the proposed uh, one article um, that will be uh, submitted tomorrow pending any potential changes uh, from the board this evening. Um, this is not a public hearing. This is um, purely to discuss the uh, the warrant article language for tomorrow. A full hearing will be held on April 28th. 29th, thank you very much. Um, April 29th, um, and prior to that time, the uh, final main motion um, may be um, may be altered. So uh, at this point, uh, we can certainly discuss the main motion, but the discussion this evening is uh, primarily around the language of the um, the Warren Article language, which will be submitted uh, during the um, during the uh, time that the warrant is the special town meeting warrant is open tomorrow. So Claire, any clarifications? Sure. Thank you. Um, this Warren article um, is an extension of the, um, the conversation that I've had with this board about a procedural <clears throat> flaw um, in um, Warren Article 12 of last uh, of fall town meeting. Um, the AG's office working with town council has determined that um, the, the town meeting needs to would uh, should re-vote on the map. Um, and the parcel list um, that are attached to the MBTA community zoning. Um, and so um, town council has really taken the lead on um, this warrant article and on what is required from the attorney general's office. Um, he drafted um, uh, the warrant article as well as the um, draft amendment language, um, uh, I believe in consultation with the attorney general's office to make sure that it is correct um, and, and is indeed exactly what the attorney general's office is looking for in a, in a free vote um, of town meeting. Um, we spoke about um, how quickly and what the board's involvement uh, needs to be in progressing this warrant article. Again, um, this is not the public hearing this evening. It is merely a discussion on uh, article language um, and propose, you know, the, the draft amendment, um, if the board has any comments on that. The warrant will open and close tomorrow, um, is what I believe. Um, and. Um, you know, we will be able to get um, any comments or, or thoughts to uh, town council um, tomorrow before the warrant open closes um, and should be able to move forward from there. Great, thank you very much. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and um, see if there is any discussion regarding the, um, the draft warrant article language and we'll start with Steve. Um. With respect to the warrant language itself, uh, 
Actually, no. My all of uh, all of my comments were related to the draft bay motion. I'm I'm okay with the board language. Okay, great. And we can come back to the draft to the um, main motion language after we review the warrant article language. Gene. Uh, so I called town council this afternoon and had a conversation with him about this. And so what I'm going to mention just in the warrant article language mm -hmm. itself is based on that conversation with him. The first thing I'll point out is this says not inserted at the request of the redevelopment board, but inserted at the request of the Department of Planning and Community Development and the town manager which is pretty unusual for a zoning article. And I had a conversation with town council about that and why that was. And he ended up thinking it would be better if it was the ARB warrant article rather than um, the Department of Planning Community Development and the town manager warrant article. So that's for our consideration. But um, it seems to me that's the way zoning articles other than you know, resident articles are presented and it would make more sense. <clears throat> so that's one. Number two, his use of the term in quotation mark MBTA communities, which was not used and is not in the text that the um, town meeting adopted in October, and he said he just got this from some other towns that did it, and it was perfectly okay to leave out, quote, MBTA communities, close quote, from both the title of the article and then from the wording of the article itself, where it says, quote, MBTA communities, close quote. So I'd recommend leaving that out. And also, he got the words backwards. It's not multifamily overlay housing district, it's multifamily housing overlay and it's districts with plural, mm -hmm. because there are two. When you look at um, what was adopted by town meeting in the text, it's districts. So we would need to change that um, wherever it says multifamily <coughs> overlay housing to housing overlay and then districts. So there are a couple places where that would have to be fixed. And since we're taking out MBTA communities, my suggestion in the sentence for the bylaw where it says to see if the town will vote to amend its zoning map and zoning bylaw by amending section 6.1.2, 4.1.2, 4.2 the zoning bylaw, I would add consistent with the MBTA communities law. And then I'd say to add and then the rest with the changes I suggest. So that's what I would have for the article title and the article itself. Thank you, Jean. Um, I think once we get through discussion, we will restate the the full uh, language to ensure that we are that we have caught everything um, that you have suggested. Sheena. Uh, so I have nothing for the warrant language, um, and we're we coming back to the draft. We're going to come back to the draft so, amendment. All right. So I'll leave it there for now. Great. Thank you, uh, Ken. I sort of agree with Gene, but so you're saying this should be uh, at the request of the ARB? Well, however we usually do it, when we're the ones who put in a warrant article. I so forgot exact what the exact wording is. Submitted by, filed by, whatever the exact wording is when we do it. Insert, I think it's inserted. Yeah. Okay. Do we have to vote on that then? Yes. If it's yes. our... Uh, in, uh, yeah, we do. Will we have time for that? Yes, that, that is built in. That is what the hearing on um, April 29th okay. is for. Right. We, will, we will hold the hearing and vote. Uh, typically, we do them separately because we need multiple nights to do so, but there is no issue with us doing so in one evening. And <clears throat> would that also open up the public comment to them? Correct. The that whole time? hearing would be on that date. Okay. All right. No, that's all I had. I just hope that we had enough time uh, making that change. Great. Um, one item I 
would look at, and I did not have a chance to review this with um, town council. Let me just get back to this item here. Um, because I do want to make sure that we're consistent with the way that the, um, the district was described in the Warren article from special town meeting 2023. Um, the procedural item references that this map um, I'm looking at the words as approved by the town special town meeting on October 25th, 2023, and want to make sure that the way that others are reading that is that that is relative to the zoning change and not to the map as approved. say something please yeah I think you raise an important point because it's a problem <clears throat> in the wording below yeah. when we get to that also because um, what what's in this article is what they haven't approved correct yes so without making the changes that you've suggested um, I would suggest We could in say. alignment with the, um, and then restate the MBTA, or, or excuse me, the, um, so you would keep the first two sentences <clears throat> and then not note um, as reviewed and in alignment with the approved multifamily housing overlay districts. Um, or in alignment with the multifamily housing overlay districts as approved by the town special town meeting on October 25th, 2023. So we could consi separate. Consistent with, not a, Correct. Consistent with. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so after the semicolon, we could say consistent with. with The multifamily housing overlay districts as approved by the town special town meeting on October 25th, 2023. Yeah. Or you could say, well, yeah. As consistent with the multifamily housing overlay districts. Yes. And there's a similar problem in the here. Oh, I know. We haven't gotten yeah. to that yet. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, okay. um, this is largely for Mr. Benson, but would it be worth reference just making mention of Chapter 40A, Section 3A? As opposed to consistent with the MBTA communities? Yeah. Well? That would be yep. the yeah. yeah. There's, I mean, if we can cite a chapter and verse, I right. think it would make sense to do that. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Okay, so this would read, to see if the town will vote to amend its zoning map and its zoning bylaw by amending section 4.1.2 and section 4.2 of the zoning bylaw to add the multifamily housing overlay districts. Multifamily housing overlay districts? Yes, I yes. have that plural. Okay. Yep. Um, consistent with the multifamily housing overlay districts approved by the town's special town meeting on October 25th, 2023, yeah. or take any action related thereto. The, the only other thing would be after the 
paraphrase section 4.2 of the zoning bylaw, it could say consistent with Mass General Laws chapter 40A, what is it, section 4A? Yes. So, and the... No, so, so it would be up here. I'm sorry, so can you tell me exactly? So this? you see where it says by amending section 4.1.2 yes. and section 4.2 of the zoning, of the zoning by bylaw consist, and consistent, consistent okay. with Mass General Law chapter 40A section 3A. In lieu of MBTA right, communities. Right, right, yeah. right. Just substituted. Which flows right. a little better. Right. Yeah. Right. And then it goes back to add the multifamily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Consistent with, and then, then it goes into, again, it's another consistent with. That's okay, because okay. that's after the semicolon, right? Correct, after the semicolon. Consistent with the, um, consistent with the multifamily housing, multi -family overlay, housing districts. overlay districts uh, approved by the town's special town meeting on October 25th, 2023. Yep. Mm -hmm. May I buy a conjunction after the first semicolon? Please. <laughs> Please. Uh, I was thinking just a uh, semicolon and. Okay. And. And consistent with these. Yes. yes. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so Do you have that? Shall I read it? Please. To see if the town will vote to amend its zoning map and its zoning bylaw by amending section 4.1.2. Section 4.2 of the zoning bylaw consistent with Mass General Law 40A, Section 3A. Sec chapter 40A, Section 3A. GL chapter 40A, Section 3A, to add the multifamily housing overlay districts as approved by a town special town meeting on October 25th, 2023, and consistent with the multifamily housing overlay districts as approved by special uh, town meeting or take any action thereto. So we're, we're, there's an extra. Your first as approved by the town special town meeting should be struck. There's a semicolon after the citation of Mass General Law okay. chapter and section and the first reference to multifamily housing overlay districts, okay. semicolon and consistent with the multifamily housing overlay districts uh, approved by the town special town meeting. And then it would say inserted at the request of the redevelopment board if that's what we would prefer. Yes, it's inserted at the request of the redevelopment right, board. That's consistent that. with our other. And then, um, Claire, will you review this updated language with Mike Cunningham tomorrow morning? First thing. Okay, yeah. great. <clears throat> great, and if you, um, wouldn't mind um, either you or Mike share, before it's submitted just sharing that out to me and perhaps to James um, via email before that's submitted. Sure. Okay, great. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Um, there was also, Jean, the suggestion to the title, which was amendment of zoning map just delete MBTA communities. Designating the multifamily housing overlay districts. Right. And amendment of the zoning bylaw. Right. And then again, in the article title itself, you have to delete MBTA communities and make districts a plural. So it says zoning bylaw amendment slash amendment or zoning map designating the multifamily housing overlay districts and amendment of zoning bylaw.
So basically, in that title, just crossing out MBTA communities, the article title. Correct. And, and districts, plural. Right, districts. Yeah. All right. Any other discussion on the title? All right, uh, let's get to the draft amendment. Uh, Jean, do you want to kick us off again? Um, I think a lot of people had comments. My major comments were in the draft amendment deleting every time there's MBTA communities in, in quotes, um, fixing the one, two, three, four, five places where the words overlay and housing are reversed and adding districts to them. And then we have, we have the problem in here where, um, I don't know exactly how we want to say this, town meeting approved the text, but there's, you know, the AG's office felt like we had to have town meeting approve the map again. Correct. That's really what it is, and so I think a plainer way to say that part of it, and then then down in accordance with this vote, I think would be fine with again getting rid of MBTA communities and flipping the overlay housing and adding the districts. But I think well, Steve and Shana had some other issues with it too. Okay, let's start with uh, Steve. So the actually I just had one. Um, under the proposed change in 412, um, I was going to ask if we should name the two overlay districts, but I think just making uh, the new item, enumerated item number three plural would be fine. Yeah, they need to write number, yeah, overlay and housing need to be reversed. Oh yeah. That, They're reversed on that one too, I forgot that one, and adding districts at the end. I, I agree, Steve. I think since it's uh, mentioned multiple times that perhaps naming both of them and then, you know, in parentheses, noting that in the we'll just refer to them as the plural districts mm -hmm. going forward would not be a bad idea. There, there's no harm in being as specific as possible. Where would you do that? I'm sorry. Uh, so that the town doesn't hereby amend, not amends, its zoning map um, to designate the, and then I would name the two districts and then in parentheses call them the multifamily housing overlay districts that uh, were voted and approved by the town's 2023 special town meeting. So name the, um, the business, as well as the neighborhood multifamily districts. I would do it reverse. I would, because if what, I see what you're saying, what yep, they were adopted that's fine. was yep. the multifamily housing overlay district consisting of correct those two districts. That makes sense. Steve, does that address your concern? Yes. Uh, one other, um, where we say approved by the. 2023 special town meeting. Uh, I believe we had special town meetings in the spring and fall. So Correct. maybe we can say fall October special town meeting. 23rd special town meeting. Or just to indicate it's the fall. Yep. Thank you. Sheena? Uh, Rachel, you spoke to my main concern, so I'm going to leave that for you to raise again. You uh, were more articulate about it than than I was going to be. Um, that's about naming the two districts? That's right. Okay. That's right. Uh, but, Jean, I'd also be interested in hearing you talk a little bit more about uh, the issue you raised speaking in plainer language about what the what the true what the true problem is here um, I think that might be useful um, how how would you go about doing that um, so I think so 
So I don't know. I, I would have to sit down and try yeah. to write this or, out. I, um, in terms of like the getting getting back to the true nature of the problem, um, that's I think that might be better material for the discussion mm -hmm. in our report rather than the main motion. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That makes sense. That's fair. Yeah, but I agree. That this draft amendment could be a lot shorter mm -hmm. as a result. Yeah. Yeah. It, it could just be amend section whatever and the zoning map to adopt those that are referenced in. This tries to, this yes, tries to split the baby. It tries right. to do right. an explanation but not a good explanation and maybe just cut it all together and yeah. have that We discussion. have a little more time with that, right? That doesn't. Correct. That doesn't have to be in right away. Correct. Claire, I think I need you to confirm the date that the main motion needs to be finalized yep. um, prior. Well, it, um, we can review it and change it, actually, if it's our article. Up until that evening, we can change that because we will be voting on the final text. Up until which evening? Up until the hearing date on April 29th. Okay. Up in and, right. and through that evening, right. we can... Right make changes to the text of the main motion. Okay. So so for tomorrow we just need We just need the title motion. and the motion. And right. Okay. And the Warren article language. Yeah. Okay. I just want to see if we can add somewhere that explains that the zoning map that we're amending to put into this has not changed. Is the same uh, zoning map that was uh, that came with the text there? Everything else, it was is is just uh, a clerical. Uh, yeah, I think when we do that, we need to do this. But, when we write but this. we, I, I want to say that it's yep. it was not changed. It had not changed. Yep. So people will say, well, "Are you trying to slide something by or whatever?" Yep. It has not. Correct. That, that's potentially also good material for the discussion mm. section of a report. <laughs> that's all. Right. Gina, did you have something else? No. Oh, okay. Um, any other discussion? Okay. Great. Uh, so we will. Um, work on um, ensuring that this is submitted tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, so we'll now move to anything else on agenda item number four. We'll close agenda item number four and move to agenda item number five, which is open forum. So anyone who's joined us this evening who wishes to speak, please raise your hand. Seeing none, we will close open form, forum and move to item number six, which is new business. And I will see first if Claire has any new business. Not at this time. Great. Thank you. Ken? No. Nope. Shana? No. Jean? Yes. Unfortunately. Go for it. So, <laughs> so um, what we just were discussing for MBTA communities made me go back and look at all of the warrant articles we put forth for the regular town meeting. And I realized that when we proposed deleting the um, wet, Inland Wetland District, we didn't go into 4.1.2 and delete number two, Inland Wetland District. So we have to figure out how to do that at town meeting, if not before town meeting, and I'm not sure if there's a way that we can um, put in an amendment to our one article at this point, or a town meeting, or if one of the town meeting members on this board will need to put in an amendment, just because all we really need to do is, is to delete- Is the map this change. Is to, no, yep. is to delete this line right yep. here, which we failed to do when we agreed you know, when we voted to delete the Inland Wetland District, we didn't look back at 4.1. So 
I don't, you know if there's a way to do that? I don't know if there's a way to do that before town meeting. So we can, um, Claire, do you want me to talk to Mike um, Cunningham and Greg, the moderator, about that? What I would do is I would then pull that from the request to be included on the consent agenda, the that yeah. particular warrant the article. I included that on the... Yeah, um, we'll get voted off the consent agenda. Well, you know, <laughs> it is an administrative <laughs> change. So um, I can ask that that be pulled, and then at the same time we can have a conversation with with the two of them to determine how how best to address that. Yeah, because if we Steve, can address it ahead of time, Steve or I can. Yeah, I was going to say, it. I, I would offer to um, to file an amendment. Yeah, we could Great. do that if it, if it can't be done ahead of time. It's just cleaning up a little piece that we didn't do. Okay. And that's uh, which letter in four point one? Four point one point two two. Thank you. See it in the Thank you. District, we should have proposed deleting that along with everything else. With the Thank you. Okay. Sorry, Sheena. And is that? Um, do we need to? Do we need to delete it elsewhere? For example, maps or anywhere else? I don't think so. There's, there's no, map. no map exists of the inland wetland perfect. district. Yeah. yeah, it's a good question, though, right? It's a great question. Yeah. yeah, we so rarely make a map change, change. like this yes. um, that it's um, there, important there to review that. There should have been a map, by the way. There should be a map of the floodplain district. Right. Uh, anything else, Gene? No. Steve? Um, I do have something. Yes. Uh, so, over you know things I amuse myself with on lunch breaks. Uh, okay, this this week it was uh, looking through the uh, results of the 2023 Indigenous Arlington Town Survey. Uh, so there were 1,944 responses, which was a, a significant increase over last year. But um, two things I thought were sort of noteworthy. Three things I thought were sort of noteworthy. The largest group of <coughs> respondents by tenure, how long they've lived in town, were people who've lived in Arlington zero to five years. That was 23%. Mm -hmm. uh, the next largest group was um, 11 to 20, and then six to 10 years. Uh, so between those three, it's about that's about 60% of the respondents. So we continue to turn people over at a fairly good clip. Um, the report uh, mentioned 79% uh, answered that they own their own home rather than rent, which is a, a higher percentage than uh, the census figures indicate. Um, this could be, it could be um, you know, just in terms of a different, you know, a difference in who answered um, is not, does, is different than our the census. Or it could be that, you know, things, uh, things have changed that much since 2020. Uh, and finally, um, 32% of respondents reported having incomes over $200,000. That's the largest group. Um, and it was up 3% from uh, last year. That's, thank you for the that, summary. That is my summary. <laughs> Much appreciated, Steve. And thank you for pouring through that in such detail. <laughs> Steve, household incomes or personal incomes? So there is, I don't remember the way they asked it. Um, so in, in, I, I think bef in the past, there was a point in the past where uh, one copy of the survey was mailed on paper to every household. Um, and now I think they've sort of switched to individual, yep. uh, polling individuals. So I think it may, I, I am not 100% sure, but I think it may be individual. Interesting. Great, thank you very much. Any other new business? Is there a motion to adjourn? So motioned. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. This meeting is adjourned. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.